Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, Episode 635. Ovarian cysts, what do they mean to postmenopausal women? BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Moffat, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin is the author of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the award-winning book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Hi, I'm Dr. Kathy Maupin, and this is the BioBalance HealthCast. Um, today, we're going to talk about, a, about women and talk about ovarian cysts in women who are menopausal. Now, um, ovarian cysts, by definition, are a little fluid-filled sac on the ovary. And prior to menopause, an ovarian cyst usually means that the ovary has made an egg and the egg is within that little sac and at ovulation it will rupture and and the egg will come out. That's Those cysts are generally very small, they're about 18 millimeters or less and we see them on ultrasounds just incidentally when we're looking for other things or for, for fertility testing we look for those eggs to see when they're ready to ovulate, so when we need to either inject the sperm into the uterus or people need to have intercourse. So an ovarian cyst can just be a follicle in people who are premenopausal. There are other things that can be in women who are premenopausal as well, but today I'd like to concentrate on postmenopausal women because I take care of mostly postmenopausal women in my office nowadays. I, f I spent my first 29 years doing OBGYN, and in that practice, I was trained and took care of ovarian cysts. Then my practice overlapped with the BioBalance Health practice, which is a hormone replacement practice, and I've been doing that for 21 years. And now, periodically, I will find an ovarian cyst on a menopausal patient. That generally sends chills down my patient's back when I tell them that they have an ovarian cyst because they think immediately ovarian cancer. I have to tell you ovarian cancer is very rare and even more rare if you don't have it in your family as a genetic problem. So that is not what I first think of, but I have to consider that there may be something wrong with the ovary because after menopause, your ovary just stops working. In general, you don't, make, uh, you don't make eggs, you don't ovulate, the ovary stops making estrogen and testosterone and progesterone, it just becomes dormant, it like goes to sleep. It's still there, but it shrinks and gets very, very small. So to have a cyst on an ovary that is menopausal means that Maybe it was there before my patient was menopausal. Maybe it was, I mean, if you don't have an ultrasound, you would never know if it's small. Uh, even if it's big, you may not know. So it could have been there. I just didn't do an ultrasound before now, and now I'm seeing it. So now I have to decide, is it something I have to worry about? Is it something that might grow? Is it something that might rupture and bleed uh, for my patient? Generally, it's none of those things. It's something that's been there for a long time and is just there and is not growing, and it's not going to be dangerous for my patient. But it is something that I do have to talk about all the time. And the reason is, um, in my biobalance health practice, I, we are very concerned with making sure our patients are healthy and don't have anything wrong with their uterus or their ovaries or their breasts before we give them estrogen or we give them testosterone. Partially, that is because the biggest risk of taking estrogen in any form, not just pellet form, which is what we use, is uterine bleeding. So I make sure I, I get an ultrasound before any estrogen is given to see if the uterus has a thick lining that's left over from premenopause, or if the patient is already getting a thick lining, which could mean 
something called endometrial hyperplasia, which is benign, it's just a thick lining, or it could mean endometrial cancer is already there, and I certainly don't want to make it grow with uh, estrogen. So um, estrogen is, is relatively benign in people who don't have that already before we start hormones. So that's why I always look ahead of time to make sure that I'm not causing any harm. I'm also looking for things in the uterus that might grow with hormones, which would be fibroid tumors, which are benign. They're muscle masses that under the influence of estrogen can sometimes grow. So if a patient has that, I tell her that she has that and that that's a risk of estrogen. She can decide whether she wants estrogen or not. Then we are very careful about our dosing of estrogen and making sure her blood levels aren't high so, so that the fibroids won't grow. Or we give testosterone and, um, and anastrozole, also called Arimidex in the oral form, and that we put that into a pellet, which actually can shrink fibroids. So, so we're looking for any pathology in, the, in my new patient's pelvis that we can either help with we can help diagnose, or we may have to send them back to their gynecologist for a biopsy of the uterus or, or a um, DNC or even a laparoscope. So every once in a while, and it's much less common than finding a thick lining or a fibroid, I will get an ultrasound that has an ovarian cyst in it. And an ovar when I say an ovarian cyst, I usually mean a, a sac of fluid that is attached to the ovary. And like I said, they usually have been there for a while, but nobody noticed because nobody had to do an ultrasound for any reason. They were just there, and they are, aren't going to cause any harm. But because women are menopausal and we have more risk of having something that would be um, dangerous to us after menopause, and they shouldn't be, you shouldn't be making cysts every month because you're not ovulating anymore. We, we put more um, weight on finding out what's really wrong. So one of the things we look at is how big is it? If it's very small, if it's less than seven centimeters, which is less than around three and a half inches, then we consider it benign looking and we usually will watch it. We'll do another ultrasound in three months, see if it grew, see if it shrunk. Uh, so basically we look at it from the um, perspective of looking at the size. So it, it's measured on ultrasound. Uh, then we have to do another ultrasound to follow up. But the way we determine if there's anything that has to be done about this cyst is First of all, the ultrasound size. The second is, is it clear? Does it look clear on ultrasound? Is it just clear fluid? Because clear fluid within a cyst is much more uh, indicative of a benign process, something that's not growing and something that's, that is essentially just there, but not going to cause trouble. Is it perfectly round or is it irregular? Because irregular cysts, ones that have... Uh, solid areas in the consistency on the inside or the outside is irregular could be something else. Now it doesn't always mean it's cancer. It could be an endometrioma that's still there after menopause. It could be a fibroid on the, on the ovary. Both of those are benign, but sometimes those have to be removed. So we watch those to see if they are growing. We also look for any fluid that's in the pelvis. So not only are we looking at the uterus, and we're looking at the tubes and the ovaries, but we're looking to see if there's fluid around the uterus, tubes, and ovaries collected in the bottom of the pelvis. Since we're sitting or standing most of our day, usually fluid that, um, that we have on the inside of our abdomens will, will collect in the bottom of our pelvis around those organs. And sometimes that sign of fluid would move us to want to biopsy the cyst. If there's fluid around it, we want to see why. Some um, ovarian tumors or cancers actually weep fluid, and so that would indicate something that we should operate on. Um, and then the last thing is looking at progressive growth or, or just staying the same. If a cyst is um, 
stays the same over three to six months. Maybe we'll ultrasound them in two months, three months, and then again in six months just to see if it's just the same size, same consistency, same everything. If it is, then in general it's benign. Most people who have this, most women who have this, actually choose to, to have something done so that they can prove it's not cancer. They just can't wait six months. So oftentimes they will choose to have that cyst removed and sent to pathology to make sure it's okay. And that's fine. You can choose to do that, and that would be up to you and your gynecologist to make that decision. If it is something that looks suspicious of cancer, then your, your gynecologist is going to say, you know, you need to have this taken care of and removed and, and evaluated uh, pathologically so that we can find out if, it, if there's something really wrong or if it's just, just a benign cyst or mass. One of the other things we look at is, is it going to be something that's going to cause an acute problem? So if a cyst is rather large and it's on what we call a pedicle, so sometimes cysts will have a little stalk on them and they kind of flop around the ovary. So the ovary's here and there's a stalk and then the cyst is moving, you know, when you move, it moves. And those are dangerous only, in, generally, only in the um, way that they might twist. And if they twist the whole ovary because they're big and floppy, then they could cause a, an acute abdomen. That means like the same kind of pain you would have if you had appendicitis. So if the ovary twists on its pedicle, which is the, um, which is the um, tube that feeds it with blood, if it twists on that, then that can cause an acute abdomen and a need for surgery emergently. Sometimes when we see that, we talk to the patient about it and decide, we decide, they go home, talk to their husbands, whether they want to have it out now or they want to wait and see what happens. Uh, most people want to have it out now because they feel um, confined to not travel, not go outside the range of their hospital and their doctor. And, and uh, I understand that. <laughs> That would be something that would probably change my mind about having uh, a cyst uh, or a mass taken out of the pelvis. But we have really great, amazing new ways of operating on the pelvis that doesn't require an incision. It requires tiny little incisions and trocars where we operate with what looks like chopsticks or long chopsticks with instruments on the end that are very tiny, little scissors, little cautery, little things that we can do to either remove the ovary or carve the um, cyst off an ovary if we think it's benign. So when um, that's one of the options is to have it operated on. Now, there are several diagnostic ways or uh, processes of evaluating a cyst. The first is sometimes people aren't getting an ultrasound before, they're, before they get their hormones, they're just in the doctor's office and their doctor does a, a palpates, which means feels the uterus and the ovaries by putting two fingers in the vagina and a hand on the abdomen. And then they squeeze and they feel how big the uterus is. Is it normal size? Is it normal con contour? It, are the ovaries on either side enlarged or the normal size or, or really small like they are in menopause? So that would be the first one way to find an ovarian cyst. The next thing that would happen if there was a cyst and if the patient was not menopausal would be to do a pregnancy test to make sure it wasn't a pregnancy in the tube or the ovary. If a patient is menopausal, that's not possible. You can't get pregnant after menopause. So the next step in a menopausal woman is an ultrasound. And the ultrasound is done by putting a, uh, a probe that... Um, is long and thin and fits into the vagina and looks directly at the ovaries. So that's one picture we do, or one way of looking at the ovaries. Another way is to do an abdominal ultrasound like people do for pregnancies. And they just put um, gel on the abdomen and look through a blad the bladder to see the, uh, see the uterus and ovaries. And that's a second way. So usually they do both in the case of an ovarian mass. Um, if the cyst is looking, almost any cyst is going to be repeated if they're not going to be operated on. So usually a second ultrasound is done in 6 to 12 weeks to see 
if there's any growth or any change, uh, and usually that will document that it's benign if there's no change. Um, if a ultrasound is technically dif difficult, meaning if you have a very thick abdominal wall, it, if in our obese patients, it's very hard to feel a little tiny uterus through an abdominal wall that's that thick. So sometimes we have to do other things other than an ultrasound. I mean, the vaginal ultrasound would work to, to look at it, but you won't get a great picture in that case. And sometimes you have to do an MRI or a CT scan of the pelvis to actually see a mass. That generally won't be done unless there's something suspicious about the cyst or mass. Um, last but not least before surgery would be checking something we call... Um, we call tumor markers. They're alpha fetoprotein, CA125, CEA. These are two markers that we have found can be in, in your bloodstream from an ovarian tumor. So we will check those tests to make sure that we don't have an ovarian cancer. Those are very rare, but they are uh, good ways to find out if we need to operate right away. And then the treatment protocol after that, if there is, is something serious, then treatment protocol is not just a laparoscope. If we think that there is cancer there, then we will ask an oncologist, a GYN oncologist, to join us to operate. And that GYN oncologist will usually make an incision because they need to see everything. They're going to take out the uterus and the ovaries and the tubes and the cervix. They have to take out everything in this case because there can be spread to that. The next thing is that um, they will also biopsy lymph nodes that are around the pelvis and up alongside your aorta that goes all the way up to where the aorta enters your chest. They will also remove something called the omenum, which is a, a, a fatty apron of pad that's, that protects your intestines from trauma. And it also can be involved in spread. So if the if this is something that could be cancer, those are the things that a patient would go through. This is very rare, less than 1%. This is not most likely you. So, but I have to, I have to include this because this is part of what we do with ovarian cysts that grow or are big or look suspicious or are painful or have a positive, um, positive tumor markers. So in general, I want you to concentrate more on menopausal women having benign cysts that don't do anything. They just sit there. And they're not going to hurt you if they're small. And you're not going to need other surgery if they're not pedunculated, meaning they're not on a stalk because they're not at risk of, of twisting. But I do want you to realize that it is important if your doctor says you need an ultrasound to see what this is, or you need another ultrasound to see if it grew, that you do that. Because it's very important not to ignore something or put it off because if this was something bad, it goes fast. So you don't want to mess with it. You want to do it right now. So, or as soon as your doctor can. So I just want you to be aware of the possibility, very small possibility of it being something that is dangerous. And otherwise, I just want you to Rest assured that if it's clear, small, and it doesn't grow, that it is likely not going to bother you. It's just going to be something that we keep an eye on. Thank you for listening today. I hope this relieves your worry and doesn't make it worse when someone tells you you have an ovarian cyst after menopause. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth.